After having fun learning about rocket stoves with our space heater project, we decided to get serious. A rocket mass heater! Now that's a project way too enticing to resist, and we had just the right place for it. We recently moved our large wood stove into the family room, where it could be more useful in the larger room. We gathered many ideas off of the internet. There are so many ways to build these. Here's ours. I'll go ahead and get the outside of it down here and the bench that goes along this side, okay? Placement of the rocket stove is important. The stove will be located on the left and a warming bench to the right. It will be built in three phases. The foundation phase uses block laid end to end using mortar to cement the blocks together. After the foundation blocks are placed, the firebox will be set with mortar using fire brick. The mechanical phase requires a combustion chamber and 6 inch venting to the outside. We also will include a clean out for ash removal. The finish phase completes the bench with cob, a finish layer, tile decorations, and linseed oil. Everybody got it? Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Yep. We start with a foundation for a bench, laid out with old bricks, and using homemade mortar to bind them together. This is how we make our homemade mortar mix. The materials are mixed as follows. One coffee can of Portland cement. Three coffee cans of sand, mixed with water to a creamy peanut butter consistency. I can't believe we're purposely putting dirt on the floor. I'm not vacuuming. The next day, us gals cob the bottom row. Okay, what, then we'll come if back. you look closely, you can see bottles we added for decoration. Okay. I am coming like a queen. Right now we have our foundation set up here for our fire brick to go on top of the, this section here. Using fire bricks, the fire box is awesome. formed. The floor of the fire box. One side will be where the fire is built, and the other will feed into the bottom of the combustion chamber. Another brick layer is added. The bench is filled with, well, whatever we can find, and a cob platform is made. This is how we make our homemade cob mix. The materials we use are as follows. One coffee can of clay, three coffee cans of sand, one handful of straw, mixed with water to a chunky peanut butter consistency. Duct piping is laid out, then attached and moved into place. Cob is used to hold the pipes in place and will become the storage for heat, hence the mass heater. Cob is continually added. Cob layers appear to be going up quickly, but each layer needs many hours to set up before adding a new layer, or it will come crashing down. Ends together. This will be the outside of the combustion chamber. Then we have a six-inch tube to go down inside, and then we're going to be putting cob on the inside for insulation. The combustion chamber is built using two five-gallon steel buckets, top and bottoms removed and welded together. A six-inch pipe is inserted with cob and used for insulation. A 30 gallon drum will be used for the cap. Because the top of the barrel is rusty, a top is designed. A circle is cut out of the side of an old appliance. The hole is patched and cob is added before the new top is welded into place. A hole is cut in the ceiling. I just cut a hole in the roof. Run our pipe up through so that we can get our venting done properly. Shay gets the painting done. The six inch piping is used to direct the heat through the bench and up and out of the roof. Pull it up. Back to cobbing. Shay lays out the tile design. Tiles are glued using, well, a cob. I'm sorry, this right there. What they're doing? The inner combustion chamber is ready to be moved into place. A blade of grass is discovered growing on the bench. Bree, Bree, look, there's grass growing right there. I think we should leave that there for the steer. He <laughs> might like that. Be a little nibble. A little toothpick. <laughs> While mom and I are trying to decide what to do with the blade of grass, dad came by and picked it. The barrel is sanded down and painted. 
Now cobbing is getting a little more serious. Speaking of things that would not be funny, that would be one. The final piece to the combustion chamber is placed. Lo and behold, it looks like they put a barrel on it. Then it's cobbed into place. A pottery piece is placed over the firebox. A quick test. That's enough. Right now with that little piece of paper, you can put some wood on that and it would start right away. We brought in Jacques. He's world renowned for a sculpting of the magnificent Parc de la Chaise. He will be overseeing the sculpting of our bench. Bonjour. As you can see, I designed the curvature of the seat to fit your derriere perfectly. Let's see if this workman can execute my artistic design with attention to detail and perfection. Ho oh, ho ho ho, not bad. This is beautiful. After about a week of firing up the stove, the cob finally dries. Now comes the coating with linseed oil. It takes three coats. We fire up the stove and it works as designed. We love our rocket stove. It burns efficiently, using less wood and giving off more heat because of its combustion chamber and its thermal heating storage. It was inexpensive to build. We only had to purchase the six inch piping. Pellet wood is used for burning, which creates a lot of nails. But Bryce has a solution to this problem. With all the pallets, there's a lot of nails that are stuck in them. So when you burn them, all the nails fall in the ashes. So I made this to get it out. A magnet and a wire. Now, it's time for a nap. You know, this thing could use some pillows. Oh yeah. I think there's someone in the market. A little charcoal. Three.